My name is Stephen Hand and I'm from Archery Supplies and today I'm here to do a review on the Win & Win Atrex Arrow Shafts. Now one of the major reasons for me doing this review is I shoot recurve um, and I shoot actually quite well, I'm shooting every day and I shoot compound. Um, and I wanted to increase my poundage. Now I had been shooting the Medallion XRs from Carbon Express and they're quite a good arrow and I had no damage and when I went up to the higher poundage basically all my veins got tore off um, so that means I the arrows were too weak for for my bow so I had to select some new arrows um, and in the process of selecting those I wanted to compare what other arrows on the market and which arrow what spine I would go for and which arrow I would select so before I go into that and talk about these new um, win and win arrows um, I just want to talk a bit about arrows and I'll just put those back. Now what's really important with arrows is the balance and the construction of the arrow. If the arrow has no point and weight, the arrow won't fly very well. So with fiberglass arrows, they're very heavy in the shaft and the point weight has no point. Um, well, it has, a, it has a point, but it has no weight. So when you go to shoot the arrow, basically it won't fly very well. And what you want with an arrow is you want weight at the point and basically when you shoot the point will direct where the arrow goes. Um, you want the arrow to be consistent in physical weight um, and spine. And spine is how much the arrow flexes coming out your bow. If arrows have different spine then they will shoot differently. So one of my friends Rick McKinney who makes arrows um, he said the most important thing with arrows is spine which is how much it flexes. More important than how straight the arrow is because you can always get the um, arrow to shoot straight it's more important that the arrow flexes consistently at the bow and his arrows are marked on that now the win and win a tracks if you can see it there these are only new out from win and win um, they're, an, they're a carbon arrow so complete carbon non aluminium carbon core it's complete carbon it's internal fittings so the points fit inside so it takes a pin knock system or you can fit an ACE point um, the thing with the win and win points and pins, they're a little bit cheaper than the Eastern. I actually like them because they have a little rough finish on them, on the pins. The points are break off, a little bit cheaper than the Eastern. Um, not suitable for hunting because they're not, they don't allow you to fit a screw in broadhead. These are only for target. They're thin. Now with target archers, especially recurve, you have a concept that you should be shooting a thin shaft. Now I think part of that concept is is because of wind. So people go, well I see the top shooters and they're shooting skinny, skinny shafts so I should shoot skinny shafts. So as a result most recurve shooters will be shooting skinny shafts. Now I was talking to Rick McKinney who arguably the best recurve archer in the world. Uh, he's got more medals, more records than anyone else. And I was asking him, what arrow should I shoot? Um, and he said to me, when he used to shoot Eastern and work for Eastern, he used to shoot X10s. And you're obviously working for Eastern and you're getting paid by Eastern to shoot X10s, as most of the top archers are. And he said, well, I experiment with all different arrows to report back to Eastern on how other arrows are. And he said, actually, I found gold tip arrows very, very successful. And in the wind, even though they're a fatter shaft. He said, in fact, I shot them better than my X10s, much to the horror of Easton. So the concept of a skinny arrow being better for the wind versus a fatter arrow, a traditional carbon shaft, to me is an interesting question, and that's one for you to experiment with. But the rule of thumb is skinny is better for wind. But there'll be many cases where you'll see fatter, pe fatter people, fatter shafts being shot extremely well in windy conditions. And there could be a reason for that, but that's something I have to experiment with. Um, and on the weekend, I did shoot a competition. I did shoot with skinnies and fats in the same tournament. And in fact, the fat ones I did shoot better with, but that could be me. It could just, yeah, I shot extremely well with fat arrows in the windy conditions. So I didn't shoot so well with the thins. Um, overall, it's not a bad shoot, but so thin arrows, um, internal fittings. I like carbon shafts and the reason I like carbon shafts is if you have an aluminium core with carbon around it, when my arrow hits the arrow I can't literally damage the carbon. What I found when I was shooting aluminium 
with carbon coating when I whacked my arrows against my arrows I had the carbon split from the aluminium and the first time I shot them I broke four arrows and they were about $40, $50 each $200 for, for the day shooting, I was just at a club and I was like that's too expensive for me so I like pure carbon arrows so with the Medallion XRs I've been shooting for uh, maybe five years I haven't bro broken an arrow and I needed to go up to a different spined arrow and I wanted to see you know what's around so you know take from that what you will oh, the other thing is aluminium arrows a lot of people at clubs will recommend aluminium arrows aluminium arrows nothing wrong with them it's just when you smash arrows against them when you miss the target you're going to bend them you're going to ding them and you're going to shoot through them so when I used to shoot aluminium arrows back 35 years ago I used to go through quite a few of them just through smashing them against one another so with carbon arrows today I basically haven't broken a carbon arrow for a long long time so I like pure carbon arrows now these what I've done here is I've done a board with all the kind of carbon arrows on the market the main ones and what I'm doing it for is I'm basing it on a recurve this is what I shoot I shoot a 38 pound uh, win and win wireless recurve which is you'll see me shooting videos um, now I'm going to do some tuning with these arrows in a in a little bit and you can see sort of what I found but basically what I found for a 38 pounds a 28 and a half inch draw length I need a 700 spine arrow which is actually under what the charts recommend but you'll see me shoot and I did heaps of tuning on my bow to try and get the 600s to shoot straight and they shoot okay but the tuning is not as good as it is with 700s and we're going to see that later these are the main arrows in the market now one of the things with arrows is the weight of the arrow so how much the arrow weighs a lighter arrow will shoot quicker so and basically that's really important if you're having trouble shooting distance if you're having trouble shooting distance a lighter arrow will be better for you um, so I had a friend who I used to coach with recurve and at the shorter distances indoor he was pretty much the Australian champion but when he went back to 70 meters he'd get whipped because his bow was too slow the arrows were too heavy eventually when he got faster bow fast arrows he won the championships and won the Australian title and did all that stuff so but at the short distance he was still a great shot so he would have benefited from lighter arrows now a lot of people will say a heavy arrow is more stable in the wind and there's the adverse argument that faster arrows gets there quicker so it's less affected by wind that's up to you to judge um, I'm yet to sort of test all those theories even though I've been shooting forever so these are the arrows I've selected here now I've selected arrows which are 0.003 in, in straightness so I can kind of compare price weight now the win and win Atrex carbon arrow is 6.3 these are 700 spines 6.3 grains per inch and they cost Australian dollars about $120 a dozen uh, carbon ones from Eastern are 6.0 .6 so they're a little bit lighter and they cost $149 um, the other thing about when they make these arrows is how much carbon they have in them versus resin the more carbon they have the stronger they'll be and the different construction of them um, will make them stronger or less stronger the X10s which are regarded by many recurve archers as your premium recurve shaft is 6.7 so it's actually a heavy arrow so it will shoot slower the price on those per dozen is about $545 now the question is if I'm shooting the X10s versus the Atrax will I shoot better with the X10s now I could test that but I could pretty much say no I'm not going to shoot any better with the $500 arrows than the 120 arrows but I'm happy to test it and I will be doing some of these tests a little bit later um, the X10 is going to be slightly heavier so it's going to drop more than the Atrax um, and I have shot X10s and if I did think they shot better I would shoot them um, now I'm dropping down to the McKinney arrow that's made by Carbon Tech so that's made by Rick McKinney that legendary archer now his arrows are really light 5.1 now the theory of that is if you make them light they go quicker 
So you can shoot lighter poundage, a lighter poundage bow, and have the same arrow velocity. Um, so 5.1, much, much lighter than the X10 arrow. It, can, it fits the standard ACE components. Um, they're about $300 an hour, uh, $300 a dozen. The Medallion XRs from Carbon Express, which is the ones I used to shoot, 6.0, so same as the Carbon One, um, 148, and basically similar pricing. These two, have, these two arrows, the Carbon One from Carbon Express and the, sorry, the Medallion XRs and the Carbon Ones have been put up against one another. The problem with the Medallion XR, it only goes to, I think, a 500 spine, so it cuts out the compound shooters. Um, now, I haven't got... These ones I've put down here, which is the Gold Tip Velocity XT, the Cheetah Pro, and the Hunter XT. I haven't done the weights in that section because I didn't regard them as a recurve arrow. Now, Rick, when I was talking to him, I said, what arrow are you shooting for indoors? Because I was like, he'd be shooting a similar poundage to me, a similar draw length, so he'd have the spine worked out. And he shoots pretty good still, even though he's an old guy, not that old, because I'll get in trouble. Um, so for indoors, he's shooting, at the last national titles, he shot 280 out of 300 with a recurve. Now, in relation to my state, that's a very, very good score. It'd win, it'd win you the men's recurve title. Um, Rick doesn't shoot every day anymore, um, but it's still a good score. Now, the arrows he shoots for with his recurve, with his win and win recurve, is the Cheetah Pros. And he shoots 625, 625 spine. Now, the weight of those is 6.1. So, once again, still a similar weight to the 6, 6.3, 6, and he shoots 100 grain points with them. And he said he finds them very good to shoot. Now one of the theories that I've often heard is a fatter shaft is easy to shoot because you don't have the vein clearance issues. So he shoots a fatter shaft with his recurve for indoor conditions and shoots McKinney's outdoors. Now when you're looking at these arrows, if you're shooting for compounds, I thought I'd just compare skinnies versus fats. Um, with a, I shoot a 60 pound compound, a PSE expression. I thought I'd just compare some of these arrows in weight. Now the Atrax arrow, which is that one I fitted with for ice veins, weighs 9.4. The carbon ones are 8.5, so the Atrax in this chart is, is really heavy in a compound arrow. X10's 8, McKinney's 6.5. It's basically almost the lightest arrow, but it's not. The Cheetah Pro from Carbon Tech is the lightest arrow at 6.1. Now I've shot the Cheetah Pro. Cheetah is a very different carbon arrow. It's a, it's like a mesh carbon, extremely strong. They, they use a high quality carbon, so there's different qualities of carbon. They use a, so it's a different process. as a higher grade carbon to get the tensile thickness, and that's 6.1. The Kinney's a 6.5. Velocity XTs from Gold Tip, which are really really popular, 7.4. Hunters, which are I'm going to say arguably their most popular hunting arrow on the market and probably the most popular carbon arrow on the market is 8.2. So the Atrax is basically the heaviest arrow of its, of its kind for compound shooting, which is kind of interesting because if you're 20, 20, 28 inches, you're adding you know, 1 to 2 grains per inch for the shaft, so you're adding about 20 grains to the overall arrow. Now I suppose it'd be argued that that doesn't make much difference because your point weight here, a lot of people are shooting 120s, 100s, and for a compound they're shooting so quick it won't matter. So I'm actually, I've set up some of these for compound, I'm going to shoot them with my compound. Um, and we're going to shoot some of the Atrax for tuning. So that's pretty much most of the arrows for target and stuff, and I'm going to shoot the Atrax um, before I do that. The Atrax comes in three grades, basically. It comes in a hunter grade called the Challenger. Now these arrows are pre-made. Um, quite a bit cheaper than the Atrax. So the Atrax are 120 for the shafts. These are 120 made. Now the problem with them, they, they glue the knocks in. And when you shoot the knock off like that, the knock's still stuck in. So now I've got to drill that out, which is a real pain. Or if you shoot the pin system, when you shoot the knocks off, you just stick a new pin in or just push a new knock in. 
then I found the Challenger style shafts, which were what I started with, the 600s, shot quite well. Um, like I said, I found them a little bit over spine for me, which we're going to test now. But then I thought I'll get some Atrax to see if they shoot better. So I'm going to shoot them with my recurve. Now, bear in mind with recurve archery, the variance, you know, like I'll shoot some decent arrows, I won't shoot some good arrows, but we'll have a quick shot and we'll see how they go. Okay, so got my bow, finger tab. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot the challenger arrows to start with. Now what I found with these, I got a dozen of them to see what the spine was like, see how they shot, because they're pretty cheap. Um, what I found is one arrow out of the 12 didn't shoot, shot off. And now that's pretty common. I was shooting with a guy the other day at the target range. One of his arrows kept shooting off in the six and I'm going to say he's not the greatest shot. He's shooting all right, but well, this one arrow just keeps sh shooting off. Um, he's shooting recurve, so he was getting a bit of variation anyway on the target, but this one arrow just kept shooting off. I said, have you ever marked your arrows? He goes, no. Nah. I said, try marking that arrow up there, because that arrow seems, that, there seems to be an arrow in the same spot every time, which is out in the six. So he marks it, next gen, that same arrow's in that spot. He goes, I'll do that again, because it might be just be me. So next end shoots it bang up in the six now the same thing happens with me shooting and if you get an arrow which is a bit of a stray so number your arrows or mark your arrows that shoot outside the group to get it to shoot in the group generally all you've got to do it could be the pin you've shot the pin so you've bent the pin on the end move the knock position that can move it in the center so you've got three basically positions you can have your knock in try the three positions and then they say you can refletch the arrows in the other position and in one position it will shoot straight. Because um, back when I used to shoot um, 35 years ago, arrows went very straight and getting the arrows to shoot in a group was actually a bit of an art. You had to tune each arrow to get it to shoot in the group. These days arrows are a lot better. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot the Challenger arrows. I'm going to shoot the Atrex. These are all Spine 600. I've got some bear shafts here. Um, and we're just shooting here at 18 meters. Um, now, not the greatest shot, the poundage, my back sore, so I've got all the excuses before I start. But the major thing I want to see, I want you to see, um, is how these arrows group. Um, so, challenges. Now, I like different knocks on these arrows, but. So that's a challenger, I'll shoot a couple more challenges. Now, I haven't sighted this bow in for these arrows because I was probably shooting the McKinney's yesterday, which we're going to shoot after this. So this is my third challenger arrow. Now, I found these arrows perfectly fine and they're really good value for a beginner. Um, so someone's sort of stunning out because they're good quality arrows, they're strong, they're skinny, so they kind of fit in, they shoot well. Um, So these are the Atrex, so these are the .003. Now what I fitted to them, these are the impulse veins from boning. They're made specifically for recurve archery. They're low profile and quite light, so they're meant to create optimal stability and less wind drift. Now for me, I'm shooting indoor, I shoot indoor every day. Basically what I was looking for is the arrow to correct quickly out of the bow. So originally I tried spin wings, um, big fan of spin wings, because they get the arrow to straighten up. But what I found over the short distance at 18 meters, I wasn't getting the stability. So these are just new from boning. Um, they're tests, I don't even sell them, um, but I'm going to after this. They come in four inch and three inch and they're made specifically for recurve arches. Now for compound, they make a similar vein called the ice vein. Once again, I'm new on the market and I actually haven't shot them, the ice veins. Well, I fitted them to my McKinney arrows last night, so I have shot them. 
um, but I haven't shot them outdoors. So these are the Impulse, and what I found is with these, because they're so long, long and such a uh, low profile, I found they shoot really, really well. Now, Boning claim in their testing they shoot fine outdoors in windy conditions, so better than their other low profile short vanes. Once again, that's up for you to test. Vanes are cheap, try them. So, we're just going to shoot these. Now, these are identical weight to the Challengers, identical. So, they're just straighter, that's also. So, theoretically, these have got bigger vanes, so you could argue they're going to be slower. Uh, more drag, so it's going to take the drift out. So for me, I find recurve archery really, you know, you grab a compound and any arrow shoots straight. Um, because you're shooting a trigger, the bow's so good. Everything's so good. Brick has really hard work to get these arrows to shoot straight. And I find most people will have this issue. And a lot of coaches, um, and the club I shoot with is a basically primarily a recurve club. They'll go, well, it's your shooting technique. Well, that's what we're gonna test here. Now these arrows, 600, is what's recommended for this bow. These are fast limbs, thousand dollar limbs. Um, I've wound up the panage of the bow to try and get the tuning correct. I've played with the plunger tension as they say in web on the web you know decrease the pressure button tension to make the arrow um, soften up in fact I found it made very little difference I moved my plunger right the way in right the way out I found it made very little difference so yes it does make a difference but it's so what's critical is the spine of the arrow so once you have the right spine arrow then you can use that stuff to make improvement from there but you've got to be such a good archer to get to that level anyway so I'll just shoot a couple more but I really like these impulse veins they stick really really well so basically I, I fletched them up on I, I shot a tournament I came in at that night and I stayed back and shot so it was like I made them up at nine o'clock at night. I shot them that night and they all stuck on. And I've had no issues with them. So I was originally th shooting 32 pounds. I had planned to shoot 44 pounds, but I found it too heavy and I just couldn't build up to it. And I was shooting quite well with 32 pounds. So I thought, well, I'll shoot, I'll increase the poundage, I went 38. And part of it makes me stronger for the compound because I'm doing weight training and that sort of stuff to try and just get stronger. So 38, I'm finding a little heavy, but I'm gonna work into it. So originally when I was shooting 32 pounds, I shot 270 out of 300. Um, when I basically increased the bow poundage, my scores actually took a huge hit. I shot a 260, 250, 260, 230, 240. Then I've shot two mid 260, 265. Um, so still not the same sort of scores. Now this is a bear shaft. Um, off the Atrex, which we're going to shoot. One thing I really liked about these is they're pre-marked for your spin wings. Um, this is one of the reasons I chose them in the first place, to save me having to mark them. Because spin wings, one of the problems of putting spin wings on um, is you've got to stick them on, you've got to mark the shafts. These are pre-marked, so to me that just made my life a little easier. They were a little bit cheaper than the medallions at 120. Um, I think the parts are a little bit cheaper than the med medallion parts. So I was like, well, we'll give these things a go. So this is shooting bare shafts. So this will tell me if the spine of the arrow is correct or not correct for the bow. So 
Now, I was watching, um, watching the English coach was shooting McKinney shafts with no fletching at 70 metres to see how they shot because you should be able to shoot a shaft without fletches and it should shoot okay, theoretically. Because the veins just basically straighten up the arrows, so veins, arrows will shoot better with fletching than without fletching, but they should shoot okay without fletching too. Now I can't actually see where these arrows are hitting, but I did go through a lot of work with these and they were hitting to the left, so <laughs> I don't know, they were hitting to the left by quite a while and I did do lots of tuning, so let's just see where it is, because I can't actually see. Okay. We'll take the camera down to the range and we'll see where those arrows sort of landed. This is my group here, um, which actually doesn't look too bad. I've got one bad arrow, that was my first one I shot, so I'll take that out. The group itself is not too bad, like the two Challenger arrows are just there. So they're not too bad, so I'll take those out. These are new target butts I just brought in. Uh, these come from Vietnam, from a company called Fasco. They're about half the cost of traditional foam targets. Um, they're brand new, so you'll see there's no marks. I can still pull my arrows out. Now for me, when I was tuning, so I've got two arrows together, I've got two over there. When I was tuning these before, I found my unfletched arrows shot high and they shot to the left. In fact, these aren't too bad, but they were about that far over to the left before. Um, and they were high, and what the charts were saying that if your arrow is high, adjust your knocking point. And I tried that, and I didn't get any success with it. So I probably would have been happy with that. But basically. What I found was I couldn't get the... Yeah, so what I found is I couldn't get my bear shafts to come into where my flat shafts was with 600. So that got me to the point of shooting 700 spined arrows. And basically what I brought was some McKinney's. I brought those for a few reasons. They're a bit, they're a bit quicker. Um, Rick said, look, try the 725s. Um, there's a couple of my friends at, Art, at the Ultra Club who shoot them, so I wanted to try them and see how they shoot. But I will compare them against the Atrex to see which one's better, because they are twice the price. But at longer distance, so short distance indoors, I don't expect there to be any improvement on the McKinney versus the Atrex or any other arrow, because speed's not an issue. But when I get back to 70 meters, 90 meters, I expect the McKinney's to actually pull my scores up. So if you're shooting at a club and shooting 30, 40 meters, I don't expect McKinney shafts to have a huge impact on your scores at all at the shorter distances. If you're shooting unmarked, I would. And if you're shooting 70 meters and 90 meters, absolutely I expect McKinney shafts to have a huge impact. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna shoot the McKinney's and you can see how they group. And then what we're gonna do is shoot the Atrax 400s out my compound and sort of see how they shot. Now I haven't shot them, I made them up this morning with ice veins um, and we're going to see how they shoot. So the McKinney Shaft 725, these are basically an ACE standard carbon fittings, pin knocks. Now I've used carbon one pins at the back end and carbon one points at the front end and I think I've used 120 grain. Now, choosing 100 grain versus 120 grain versus 90 grain, this gets back to speed and the spine of the arrow. Now, I've gone this because I shoot mainly indoor. Um, so I shoot indoor every day for practice. So I was looking for more point weight, for more stability. Now, if I shoot 70 meters competition or 90 meters competition, I'd rethink that. Um, I'm not saying I'd change it. I would just compare the difference. Now I'm shooting nice veins, these are generally a compound vein, but they are the same profile as the Impulse. 
They're a little bit heavier than the Impulse vein, but the same profile. And I was impressed with the Impulse vein, so I thought, ah, oh, blue's pretty, so very technical. So these are the McKinney 725. I'm shooting 38 pounds, 38 might even be 40 pounds now. I wound up the bow a little bit at about 28 and a half inches with high quality limbs. Now a high quality limb is much faster than a standard quality limb. So if you're shooting a thousand dollar limb versus 200, there's a difference there. So in speed, so it may affect the arrow you need. I added these little dampeners to the stabilizers yesterday to see if it stops the stabilizers coming loose from vibration. So I'm just going to shoot three McKinney's and I'll shoot three unfletched. So when you're buying arrows, from a shop perspective, it's really hard to select the correct arrow for you. I mean, there are charts, and the charts are starting starting point. You really need to shoot the arrow, so it's really good if you could buy two fletched and two unfletched, or yeah, it means you're going to have to probably blow some arrows. Um, but getting the right spine to me is critical and I'm you know I've, I've only just fletched these McKinney's last night so I haven't tried school with them but they seem like they're shooting well so because it was like 10 o'clock at night and I've been shooting all day and I had all knots in my back from shooting oh that's three fletched and what I'll do so those arrows were basically touching I think they sound like they're touching, which is good, right? I'm happy with that. Recurve's hard to shoot, so top score in this day, indoor. I'm gonna, you know, I'm probably gonna get recurve arches off score. The last competition, top score is about 270 out of 300, right? World level 290 out of 300 would be good. Um, 280 should be state class, 290 is, you know, national class. So. So you're happy if you can keep all your arrows in the gold at pretty much any distance with a recurve. If you keep them on the target, that's really good. <laughs> so I'm shooting unmarked, so I'm shooting unfletched here. I'll shoot the one more unfletched. Okay, we'll go up and have a look at those. So that's my arrows. Um, so the group itself, the fletched arrows, are awesome. That's fantastic. I've got one unfletched on this side and one unfletched on this side. Um, now I tested this with the Medallion XRs with this bow and I found the unfletched went to that side and generally the 600s unfletched would come into this far side and the 700s were basically spot on i'm happy with that the angle of the, the angle of the unfletched versus fletched coming back towards the shooter is spot on um, the grouping's good the height is good so you'll see here the unfletched arrows are the same height as the fletched arrows so when I was shooting the 600s, the unfletched were up here. And if you read the websites, it says get rid of the knocking point travel first. That's not my experience, okay? I know everyone copies what everyone else says. Not my experience because I tried it, didn't work. So get the spine correct first and then tune from there. Um, and when I say tune, it's really important. You know, your knocking point should be one-eighth of an inch above center so basically square 
the arrow should run straight down the center of the bow, slightly across to the left. Everything should be standard. Nothing should ever be extreme. There's no reason for stuff to ever be extreme with compound or recurve. So that's the 700 spine and that's a bit about tuning. What I'm going to do now is we're going to shoot the Atrex 400s out of the compound, which I haven't shot before, and we'll just see how they group at 18 meters. So I've got my compound, which is an expression from PSC, which I'm loving. I'm shooting great scores with it. I shot my first 300 this week. Um, so I love this bow. Um, didn't shoot very well at the start of it, but I'm shooting really, really well now. Um, so spine on compounds, not as critical as with a recurve because everything comes out dead straight. So when I was at the PSE factory, Pete Shepley, the owner of PSE, he had all these arrows on the ground and they were different spines. Like, you know, he had 100, 200, 300s, which would be equivalent of 500, 400 and 340s. Okay, PSE is a different spine number. They use 100, 200, 300. And I said, you shoot all those arrows over your bow? And he said, yeah. And I said, and what bow should you? He said, 70 pound full throttle. So a 70 pound full throttle should be shooting at probably a 340 or 300 and he's shooting right down to 500s out of it. And I'm like, which should be for a 50 pound bow. I'm like, does that shoot okay? And he goes, shoot's great. Now I don't argue with people when they say, you know, that things shoot great. Because if, if they've tested stuff and they've tried stuff and they're having success, that's fantastic. So my experience with compound is the arrows are not that critical as far as spine. What is critical is consistency and point weight. Um, so I'm looking for, I'm looking to shoot my arrows. If I've got a dodgy arrow as far as one that shoots outside of a group, I take it out and I can try and group that one. So these are the A-Tracks. I fitted them with ice veins. So they look the same as my McKinney and there's no, um, I haven't shot these out of compound before. So these are A-Trax 400s. So these are heavier. I'm shooting a 120 grain point. Now, I'm shooting the sight setting that would be... And I've just got to move my knocks because they'll set up for a recurve. Um, I'm shooting the sight setting that would be for goal tips, uh, velocities. So, I don't know where they're going to go. I'm shooting McKinney pin knocks on the back end. Now, that shot, that shot low in the seven. Now, that doesn't worry me, but at 18 meters, the difference between these and velocities is the difference between a 10 and a seven at 18 meters. So, basically about that much. Um, now, there's gonna be an argument there that these arrows are thinner, so the points are lower. Yes, that's correct. Um, but still, if I was to shoot the McKinney 400s, which are about the same thickness as this, um, I think they go in the 9, as opposed to the 10. So, these arrows are significantly slower. But once again, as long as the arrow is travelling fast enough, it's not an issue. So, shooting indoors, shooting 30 metres, 40 metres, 50 metres, 60 metres, not going to be an issue to shoot these arrows. When you're shooting 90 meters, it may or may not be an issue. Um, and that's just something you'd have to test. You'd have to experiment with the 70s and experiment with 90s. I assume that went alongside the other arrow, but I don't know. I don't know if I moved the fletch or not, I can't remember. Because I only just fletched these like half an hour ago. And I basically glued the knock on, so. Normally I take a bit longer to fletch arrows. I stick the pins first and, and the points and I glue them. This I didn't, I did a bit of a rush job. I stuck the pins in, refletched them. 
I had them fletched next to no time, but we'll chew the last one. We'll run down there, like they feel like they were shooting nice. So we'll just run down to the target and see how they shoot. So I'm down at the target. This is the compound shooting 18 meters with the Atrex 400s. Two arrows are close. Um, so if I had adjusted my sights, I would say that will be 10s. That one's fractionally high, the bottom two are low. I'm happy with these arrows as far as I have no issue you'd shoot good scores with them. I think they'd be extremely solid. So I've got no issue that they're not going to last. Because they're all carbon, they're thick, they're heavy. So these things would be bulletproof. Um, they're cheap. Um, I pull out the arrow target easy enough. Um, the thing I like about these they remind me of the medallion and they might even be medallions <laughs> Garden Express would hate me for saying that but um, and probably Win and Win would hate me saying that too they look to me to be very similar to a medallion arrow um, the way they're made they've got a high obviously I'm going to try and zoom in on that let's try and put my finger there they've got a high component of carbon in them less resin so a lot of the cheap I'm going to say carbon ones got a high resin component to them um, and they'll tend to lose spine over time I think you'll find these things will be fine they look good they produce a higher quality called the tornado which is 0 0.001 how much more expensive I only just ordered them because I really like these um, they came in a couple of weeks ago um, how much more expensive I'm going to guess fifty dollars a dozen that's just off the top of my head check them out um, tornado which is 0 0.001 same arrow so they make the arrows and they grade them in straightness and they base the price on that but I don't see the need for the tornado um, for regular shooting if it's $50 the arrows last forever it's that's your call to what whether you go for the pro version I probably would because arrows tend to last me forever but I have no issue with these arrows whatsoever that's the pin system, McKinney pin knock, and the pin at the front end. I think they're a good arrow, and I think they're affordable for a target shooter who wants a skinny arrow at an affordable price. I just, you know, you've got carbon ones, you've got these, but then you've also got your normal gold tip velocities, gold tip hunters, carbon tech cheaters, although cheaters are a bit more expensive. Um, but good little arrow. So I'm Stephen Hand from Archery Supplies. That's a review on the Win and Win A tracks and a little bit of tuning and the different bows, and hopefully that's been helpful for you. Thank you. Bye.